just wonder how um, how Celtic win the title now frames this Scottish Cup final at Hamden. Rangers really, Philip, come on, he needs it, not just for a trophy, I would suggest, but also for the fact that he needs a win over mm. Celtic and something to offer even the most fragile foundations for next season. Well, Rangers is a huge story in the back. I mean, Rangers, and when you know, we're talking domestic, but as soon as you say Celtic won the title or Rangers won the title, you look at you look at the team that hasn't won the title because they're the ones that are now under pressure. Uh, and the Rangers, I mean, people go on about the the, the Celtic model went through all the statistics to say that, and you know, since. You know, and you can't, you're not allowed to say it now, but since Peter Lowell came into Celtic, the dominance financially and football terms and the club infrastructure has been overwhelming. It's been overwhelming. You're almost getting to the stage now where you're saying Rangers winning the league is like a blip every now and again. So they've got to change that. And they've got to change it by a strategy. They're not going to change it by just directors throwing in tens of millions every year to buy players that are coming up from the championship and big wages at 26, 26, 7, etc. But that's for the long term. In the short term, a week on Saturday, they've got to walk out into Hamden and they'll be facing a team that could not be more full of confidence. And you just wonder about Clement's lineup that day because it'll be full of players that have failed in the league. It'll be full of players who have, not full of players, but it'll be players that are playing their last game for Rangers. He's got to play players that will play their last game for Rangers. And question marks over the entire squad. The entire squad. I mean, how many do, you, many do absolute certainties that Clement can keep? Maybe five absolute certainties. Would you keep Dessers? Oh, yeah. I would definitely keep him. Yeah, yeah. Build your team around those goals. Well, I don't, I don't know if he built a, a, a team around him because he has got. Uh, I'm thinking feelings. If he didn't have feelings, he'd be playing uh, yeah. hundred grand a week in the Premier League in England. Um, but he does. He does know how to get goals, and you always need somebody to score twenty goals a season. Um, Rangers and Celtic historically have always had someone who had, who could do that. Maybe, but maybe it wasn't exactly world class, but could still get that kind of that kind of numbers. Where it let him down was he's missed big chances in big games, mm -hmm. and you and you wouldn't really hang your hat on him through and goal in the final minute at Hamden at nothing each because you think most Rangers fans would be hiding behind the couch thinking at that point. Um, but he's definitely worth keeping. I think he's I think he's he's, he's an nice another one. He's got a great attitude. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been battered well at the post, and he just quietly got a bit of business. Always got kind of plugging away, um, and I think I think even even. By now, I think he's won over a lot of the Rangers fans now mm. as well. But his attitude. Um, so no, I wouldn't. He might be one of the ones I'm empty now. I think there is major, major work needing done. Mm. Um, I think. Come on, I get, I get this narrative that he's done well to compete for so long. Um, listen, Celtic talked about injuries. Rangers have had brutal injuries this mm. year. I mean, they've lost. I mean, Sima out for most of the season. Daniel. Daniel out for most of the season. They've had um, Raskin out for a long while. Now Goldson out at the end of the business end as well. Um, Seema was a big one for Seema me. Seema was a big one uh, after a kind of mm. sort of slow start. He was getting going. Yeah, he was looking. So. Um, it gives him a bit of width, a bit of pace. Uh, so I mean, I think I think I still think man for man, even the guys fit. I think Celtic were uh, if they put two fit squads together, I think Celtic were a stronger squad. I think they've got mm. higher levels to go. I think the the, the best performances that these Rangers players mm. couldn't match the best performances of the players. I, just, I think that's the way they are. Also, as well, I think what you've seen from Celtic is maybe it, players willing to take on an element of responsibility, thrive in big games. You look at Cal McGregor across the last couple of weeks, Matt O'Reilly, you look mm. at James Forrest at the contribution. When you look at the equivalent at Rangers, you're maybe just not getting the Absolutely. same return. So if you look at somebody like Todd Cantwell, I mean, he kissing the badge mm. when he scored the, the, the mm. third goal against Dundee the other night, is there a, a sign almost that these guys just don't quite appreciate what playing for Rangers is like, what the demand is. It's not about scoring the winner against Dundee when the title's no, slipping away from your grasp. It matters. That's almost an insult to the, to the Rangers fans. You know, it matters not a whit. It's worse than that, actually. You know, the, uh, 
I think when you're talking about mentality, we talked about managers that people underestimate how difficult it is to manage Celtic Rangers. You know, you'll even find people in Scotland go, well, oh, that's the easiest job in the week. You should try a week at Stenhouse Smear and all that. And it's not. It's a huge job because there's only two outcomes to being a manager there. You're a success or you're a failure. There's no, like, oh, it's not a bad season. I mean, if you looked objectively at Clemency, well, when he came in, X points behind in that, it made him pretty competitive the last couple of games. Got to the Scott squad final, we don't know how that's going to work out, and they won the League Cup. A lot of people were saying, Do you know what, that's not a bad first of things. Instead of that, everybody's going, the pressure is absolutely on them. And it's the thing about, and the pressure's on the players as well. And I think, <clears throat> like, take McGregor, for instance. McGregor's not fit at the moment. Mm. McGregor's playing through an injury. You can see it. See when you see him playing, he's playing through pain. Mm -hmm. Now, if you actually put him down and put the the light on him and said, well, you know, you're, he would deny it all. Yeah. But he, 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 he and he'll deny it to your face. But yeah. he's 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 played with a serious injury for the last six, seven weeks. Now, it may, I'm not a doctor. Maybe recuperating that, but it's certainly impacted on him. In many ways, yeah. you couldn't spot that with him striding out as a captain. Hearts and, as well. That game against Hearts, he was so fundamental to absolutely. that. Yeah. But, but, and, and, and so yet last night, he's a great, like anybody would be. He's a much better player with Hatati in the team. But last night, with a game which you would have thought, everybody coming in, you're playing a team. There was a great start last night. The only teams to beat Kilmarnock since uh, since Christmas are Celtic and Rangers. Yeah. You know, that's only yeah, been terrific. They've been absolutely outstanding. I think what we've seen in the last five, six weeks is is the the cores of these two teams, mm. what they call it, the leadership group, they call ah. it, they, 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 in, in kind of business terms, but the cores of these teams, you've got the Celtic core, McGregor, Hart, Carter Vickers, Arthur Johnson, now Kyogo and these guys, um, who are hooked on winning. Uh -huh. And the core group at Rangers are spooked by one. Mm. They get this in position, they get top of the league mm. and they get spooked. And that's, maybe it's because of scar tissue from previous mm. experiences, maybe it's because they're not used to handling that kind of pressure, um, but any time they've gotten in position to, to go and kick on, they've, they've, they've crashed. Um, weirdly, for the cup final, I think that helps them because when Rangers press us off, they play a bit more, a bit more mm. freedom <clears> and, yet, and you see it, <clears throat> they might as well start the game 2-0 down because mm. that's when they mm. seem to click into life. Um, is the pressure, the pressure off, though for the cup final? Do you think? I think the expectation for this cup final, Rangers fans, is practically zero because of what you're talking about. You, one team that's full of confidence and flying. I mean, the, the game against Kamar should have been a pressure game. Mm -hmm. It should have been one of those horrible, one scrappy nil. one nil, Aye. deflected goal, just get it done jobs. Not, not that, uh, not a five five goal scudding. So I think Rangers fans, and this, like you say, this this team has has got that core who have been battered and bruised a few times over the years and it looks like there's, there's, mm. Tavernier, Barisic, Goldson, mm. Lundstrom, guys that maybe look a bit bashed and bruised by it all and didn't cope with it mm. this time round. So Do you think Clermont needs it? Does he need something from the cup final? I think he'll definitely he would take something. I think the, the, the big game for him, uh, it, say they lose the cup final, the big game for him will be the first uh, game mm. against Celtic in the league, and that's it. Which is, I was just about to say, it'll be Celtic Park. This That'll year. be, you know, yeah. the way we move in Scottish football as journalists and as fans is if Celtic win the cup final, the laser like focus will be in that first game. You in almost June. start, you start, the, you start, you start the, the season, season under pressure. pressure. Ah, yeah. and, 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 but not even, you start the pre season under pressure mm. because it'll be the end of May. By June, the message boards, the papers will be talking, who's he getting in? They're under, oh, look at all the guys going out, so he's under severe pressure. The thing about it is as well, is that we can talk about external, psychological, recruitment, etc. But if you just look at the teams, if you say to them, right, and I, of course Rangers could win the Scottish Cup, it's, that's football. But if you talk about, just watching it last night, Alison, and watching Rangers the night before, and I know it was a depleted Rangers, but if you say to yourself, right, games are won in midfield, that's the great cliche of all time. You say, well, what three can Rangers or four, if they if they want to pack the midfield in, could go in there that can compete with McGregor, Hattati and O'Reilly? And I think you're going, mm, what three or four? I mean, 
can go in there and, 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 and do a job. Did he get that wrong? I think, I think, I think get... Clement knows that as well. I mean, I, he can't come out publicly at any point in this season and go, I need to clear this place out and start again. And someone uh, can't say that because no, he, he got them into a position. Exactly. He probably surprised himself. He, he knew fairly early on, oh, this mm. needs a bit of work here. And nothing's changed on that. He still knows that. Nothing, nothing's really, no lessons been learned in the last you know, month or so. Um, but he's having to rely on these guys to get to get a job done. And I think that's why, I think you get a bit of criticism of the way he played it against Celtic. Long um, ball. And I, I, I get that because it, it I mean, <coughs> take away the, the atmosphere and take away the, the team involved and that stuff. You think that's the way a lot of teams try to play it against mm. Celtic. It doesn't work particularly well for them either. But um didn't look great, did it? I mean, there wasn't any particular... F- kind of patterns of play or any kind of style it was a very much long diagonals and getting a ball up early and you think well I, I, and I get that as well because Celtic have struggled with that kind of mm-hmm. play sometimes this season but that's not a long term strategy but I don't think it will be his long term strategy mm-hmm. I think it's because of the circumstances he knows he's got a, a difficult hand to play with us now mm-hmm. and he's got to figure out a way to, 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 to do what you say to combat that he'll need to, be to do something different he can't take Celtic on toe to toe Middle of the park. Would he go game. with Raskin in the middle, do you think, for the cup final? Well, it looks as if he doesn't really fancy Raskin, you know. I mean, but <laughs> I think Raskin's a decent bet. I mean, I think Raskin is best. He's a good technical player. I mean, and there's not many t- banging down the door for that midfield. He obviously doesn't fancy Cantwell in big games. I think Diamonde, will be, he'll play, and I think he's one that they're going to hang their hat on for season. People will say, oh, he's a wee bit this and that. They paid four and a half million pounds from him. He was well scouted. There was a strategy behind that signing. Mm. He's a young kid, and and so I th- you know I think that the, the, the he's, he's got potential. What else in midfield? <laughs> Sterling's probably been the best performer for him in seventeen it's, different positions. Yeah. Um, and his energy in midfield, but you don't know what's happening inside Ibrox at the moment what is the state of play with their centre defence is, is is you know how injured are they injured mm-hmm. <laughs> you know are they I mean he's got to, he's got to come up with a pair and his Balogun Goldson Suter I mean are they going to be at least one of them going to be fit uh, who knows I think, I think I, I agree with you I think he is going to be under pressure if he loses the final mm-hmm. because it's back to a kind of similar situation that, that, that Michael Beale had, mm. having won a lot of games, got in position, almost threatening, and then mm. lost big games against Celtic. And then the first Old Farm game puts him under me- mega pressure. I don't think it should be that way, though. though. I think. <laughs> but, uh, I, mean, I, I do think there's a, an element of Clement. It's been like the kind of the, the wily coyote and roadrunner. He's uh, been across the cliff and he's managed to run so far. Uh, but at some point, the ravine's calling, uh, and that, now he's in the ravine. But isn't it my cousin? Um, so I think. <laughs> but isn't that a, 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 isn't that the, the actual centrality of the question that we've already talked about? How this isn't just a season here and a season there, and this season goes this way and that season goes this way, and it's a, there's, it's systemic now. In the last quarter of a century. The, you know, Rangers win the odd title to Celtics 18. You were talking about 18 out of 24. Yeah. So you think, well, you've got to sit down and say, right, what? how do we address this? We've addressed it by uh, throwing everything but the kitchen sink in it and, and mm-hmm. you know, and stopping the 10. Also, but, Rangers' wage bill this season is slightly it. higher than Celtic. Celtic. <coughs> Throwing a lot of money into this. But it's, it's, it's not working out long term. It's not producing a pattern of success. And you think somebody strategically has got to sit down and say, right, this is what we do. And it might incur short term pain. Mm-hmm. And that's a big thing because the, the t- dangers no are, for pain. <laughs> they're not set up for short term pain. Yeah. Do you have a good feeling about the cup final? Uh, I don't, I've not really thought about it. I think it'll be. Celtic are obvious, obvious favourites with the form that they're in. Um, Rangers need, for me, need to score the first goal to have a chance. I think he needs to come up with a, a game plan that's slightly different, Ruffy. I think he needs <clears> to work out a way to say, OK, we've gone up against Celtic on numerous occasions. They've taken 10 points from 12. Now is the time to come up with a different plan to try and, uh, and come out with a different Result. Mm-hmm. I, I think the biggest plan is, and, and I, I keep saying this every Monday, every time I pick up a paper, it doesn't matter who Celtic are playing, they're getting 75% of the ball. Celtic have got to, the Rangers have got to find a way to not let them have the ball as, as much and as long 
because they've got it for 75 minutes. They're going to be creating chances left, right and centre. So I don't know if Rangers have got anybody in their team that can dictate the game. You know, Barry used to do it with Rangers. You know, he would he get... Did it, he did it. And nobody would, he would control he did, the game. Yeah. He would get somebody in the middle. He would just take the ball and then he would just take his time and wait and see where the runners were and where they were coming and everything. And Scott Brown did that as well to a certain extent. You know, they controlled the game. Yeah. I don't think the Rangers have got anybody like that. that that's, the, that's, yeah. that's the key to it all, Tom, because it's, there's no point in anybody saying, and I know it's been said over the past uh, few weeks and months, there's no point in turning around and saying, oh, Rangers need to get physical, because when you get physical, you get a John Lindstrom situation. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't know what Rangers do, Peter. They were, I thought they were very direct to Parkhead. I thought they put a lot of balls in on top with the two full They got a wee bit of joy at it. You know, in the first 20, 25 minutes, stick the ball in behind, very direct, try to get try to get Stirling on Taylor at the back post a couple of times, even Silver eh, on Johnson. Um, so I think that's what Celtic are vulnerable in, in the full-back positions with crosses. And I think if you're Rangers, if you're, if you're Clermont and you're Alec Ray, you're, you're looking to try and get into areas where you can put put balls on top of the full-backs you know, and get bigger players and coming in on top of them. That, that's a key area for me. Rangers should have scored. A couple of times, Silva should have scored Sterling a chance at the back post as well. So that's the key areas for me. Uh, in the middle of the park, Rangers have got to win the battle in there because Celtic won it out of the park at Parkhead. Who, who would be your, your ideal three in the middle if you were going to match up with Celtic? I don't know because you'd like... I would want to play Sterling in two positions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah yes. Absolutely. Nice. You've said that before. I, I think... He gives so much when he's playing in the middle of the pitch. I mean, you look at Celtic's three in the middle of the pitch, Atati O'Reilly and McGregor, good, good players. So you, you need you need a wee bit of physicality in there and you need hard work running about them to try and stop them playing. And I think Sterling would bring that along with Diamande and... Would you play Cantwell for the start? I think he's probably going to need he scored at the weekend mm. as well, didn't he? So I think he's probably going to need it. But then, who yeah, do you got, play he... out right? Who do you play out on the left? It's, I agree. I think 3v3 in the middle of the pitch, they need to get somebody close to, to McGregor. You get a lot of stick for not, not playing Campbell at Parkhead, particularly on social media. A couple of Rangers fans I spoke to, mm. I don't think Campbell's a great season. I'm not, I'm not saying he's the, he's the answer, but he never even got on the park, Peter. Yeah. Uh, and obviously then it brings him in this week and starts yeah. him. So I don't know. I don't know if, if he fancies him in that area, but I, I think Campbell's got something about him, Peter. Do you do? Take the ball, he's got confidence, he's got a wee bit of arrogance about him. I think you've got to play guys like that in a game like that. I, I, I'm not fooled by him. I, I like my midfielders who actually can go and win a game. They make a difference in no, the game. No, I know, I know. They make a telling pass. You know, they're there when the battle gets, you know, when it hots up, you've got somebody in there who can drag the other players around him and say, listen, let's get into this but also has that calm head, as Ruffy said, a Barry Ferguson, where you could look and say, right, I, I've got the ball, I can lift my head, I can make a telling pass and kill the, the opposition defence. I, I think he's an imposter at times. I really think, for all his ability, he should stop listening to the outside noise and go and show the Rangers fans that he can do something. <laughs> tough Tom Peter. I know, but I just, I just, <laughs> I like, mid, I, honestly, if you're, if you're looking at midfielders that, that you think change a game, See, when you look at midfielders down through the years, Lee, the really good no, ones, I'm with, I'm with you they with change the a game. Now. You know, they of do. Of course, look at Callum McGregor. He's got a bit of everything in his game. And he's got a tackle in him. He's got that mentality about him. And, and he works his socks off. Works hard. But he cares. He, ca he gets angry in games. You don't really see that in Fred Rangers. Yeah. You know, they're not getting angry. They're not showing that you, you can... Can't even see frustration in some of their faces. Yeah. Callum McGregor epitomises uh, everything that's needed to be. It's funny, actually, because I think Tom Lawrence belted him in the first two minutes, and I think McGregor went up to him and said something along those lines as, oh, I, are you the new enforcer? You know, <laughs> as if to say, are you the latest one that's come to try and give me the message? But they need to find something, and I'm not fooled by, I'm not fooled by this... Waving to the crowd, all of that rubbish. I'm, I, I, if you're a footballer, go out there and do I'm it. I'm not, Peter, but I just think he's. He, I think he's, I, I would play him if I was Rangers. Okay.